Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I extend a very warm and heartfelt welcoming to each and every one of you to this extraordinary debating event honoring the legacy and values of Mahatma Gandhi, the founding father of our country. It is an honor to have you here as we come together to remember a man whose legacy continues to motivate people all across the world. In addition to being a leader, Mahatma Gandhi, commonly referred to as Bapu, was a visionary, a freedom fighter, and an icon for nonviolent resistance. His principles of honesty, nonviolence, and civil disobedience are still relevant to people of all walks of life and have left a lasting impression on the history across our nation and all parts of the world. Today, as we gather for this discussion, we want to pay tribute to his life as well as exploring deeply into his principles. The debate subjects have been chosen with care to reflect the principles and values that Mahatma Gandhi put forward throughout his life. Today's topic is the Salt Satyagraha, I don't want to take much of your time, shall we quickly start the debate? Yes ma'am. Good morning. Good morning. Shall we start? A crucial moment in the Indian independence movement against British colonial control was the Salt Satyagraha, also known as the Dandy March or the Salt March. It took place during the period March 12 to April 6, 1930. It was a peaceful demonstration led by Mahatma Gandhi against the British monopoly on salt production and distribution, which represented for more general issues of British economic oppression and exploitation in India. The Salt Satyagraha continues to serve as an example to the power of non-violent protest and the will of a people to stand up for their rights and freedom. The unity of the Indian populace under Gandhi's leadership and the success of this movement significantly influenced the development of Indian history. India had been ruled by British colonial authority for almost 200 years, and Mahatma Gandhi led the Indian National Congress, which advocated for India's independence through non-violent means. Mahatma Gandhi meticulously planned the march's routes before starting it, making sure it would travel through a variety of cities and villages to maximize its impact and gain support from different regions. He educated volunteers about nonviolent values, emphasizing order, unity, and peaceful protest. The British salt tax and their monopoly on salt manufacture and delivery were one of the grievances of the Indian population. Every Indian was affected by the salt tax because salt was an essential dietary component. The British government had control over salt, they could levy enormous tariffs, which caused salt prices exorbitantly high. The choice of salt as the protest's focal point was made due to its significance in Indians' daily lives and the message it represented, the freedom to create such an essential commodity should not be subject to foreign rule. Mahatma Gandhi saw the salt issue as a way of stimulating people and bringing Indians from every community together in the non-violent protest. Gandhi articulated 11 demands in a letter to Viceroy of India Lord Irwin dated March 2, 1930. Among one of them was the removal of the salt tax and the salt monopoly. Gandhi's decision to gather some seashore salt naturally had a significant impact, because it directly opposed the British monopoly on salt manufacture. In violation of the British salt restrictions, Gandhi and a group of supporters, including Sarojini Naidu and Abbas Tiabji, intended to march to the Arabian seashore and produce their own salt. Gandhi chose to end the march in the small coastal village of Dandi in the Gujarati state. The British government responded with repression and arrests as the march gained momentum and more exposure. Throughout the march, many protesters, including Gandhi, were arrested. As a result, the public's anger increased, and more Indians joined the civil disobedience action. On March 12, 1930, Gandhi set out from Ahmedabad Sabar Mahdi Ashram on foot with a group of about 80 followers. The march took over a month to complete and covering a distance of about 240 miles. Even after Gandhi was arrested, the Salt Satyagraha persisted. His prison time attracted worldwide attention, emphasizing the injustice of British government. Civil disobedience and protests broke out across India, with individuals making salt illegally, boycotting from purchasing British goods, and participating in various kinds of other peaceful forms of opposition. The march grew in popularity as it went along and attracted a lot of attention. Along the process, thousands of new participants increased the demonstrators' numbers. 
the marcher's diversity in terms of age, caste, religion, and socioeconomic status highlighted the broad-ranging aspect of the Indian freedom struggle. The Gandhi Irwin Pact, which was signed on March 5, 1931, is an outcome of the discussions that followed the Salt March. It signaled a short-term truce in the struggle and led to the release of political prisoners. Even though the agreement failed to fulfill all of Gandhi's expectations, it was an important step toward India's eventual independence. The march was carried out in defiance of the law. By producing their own salt in Dandi from salt water, marchers disobeyed the salt ban. Gathering natural salt was a straightforward yet potent act of defiance against British tyranny. Other non-violent campaigns around the world, such as the American Civil Rights Movement led by Martin Luther King Jr., were inspired by the Salt Satyagraha. It highlighted the effectiveness of nonviolence as a potent instrument for attaining social justice and political change. The Salt March generated a lot of worldwide media attention, which elevated the question of Indian independence. This put further pressure on the British government to respond to the demonstrators' demands. The Salt March and the broader civil disobedience movement both included numerous women. Many women actively participated and came together to support, including Kamala Devi Chattopadhyay, Kastur Bhagandi, and Sarojini Naidu. Following the march, talks between the Indian National Congress and the British government took place. Even though there was no quick settlement, the discussions were a crucial step toward the eventual abolition of British colonial power. Tourists and historians interested in the Indian independence movement often visit the restored Salt March route, which stretches from Sabarmati Ashram to Dandi. In India, March 12 is known as Dandi March Day in honor of the day the Salt March began. The Indian liberation struggle was profoundly impacted by the Salt Satyagraha. It proved the value of mass mobilization and nonviolent resistance. It also helped mobilize support for India's independence movement on a global scale. Although India's independence from British colonial rule did not occur immediately as the outcome of the Salt Satyagraha, it considerably increased resistance to it and fueled the momentum that eventually resulted in it on August 15, 1947. One of the pivotal milestones in India's struggle for independence is known as the Salt Satyagraha. It inspired further civil disobedience and peaceful protests, which ultimately resulted in India obtaining independence in 1947. The Salt Satyagraha is a symbol of the effectiveness of nonviolent protest, civil disobedience, and the determination of an alliance of people who are committed to working together toward freedom and justice. It continues to be a crucial turning point in Indian history and a representation of the global fight for human rights and self-determination. The Salt Satyagraha continues to serve as an example to the power of nonviolent protest and the will of a people to stand up for their rights and freedom. The unity of the Indian populace under Gandhi's leadership and the success of this movement significantly influenced the development of Indian history. Thank you. Thank you. Well done kids. Our debaters have demonstrated the principles of honesty, nonviolence and civil discourse, serving as examples to us of the worth of these concepts in daily life. The kids has shown us that, we can tackle challenging issues and bring about constructive change by engaging in transparent and informative debates. I want to express my gratitude to both of our debaters for their outstanding performance and for raising the bar for respectful discussion. We are all inspired by your dedication to Gandhi's beliefs. Let's keep in mind Mahatma Gandhi's everlasting advice as we listen to these lively discussions. He once said, you must be the change you wish to see in the world. Let's use this opportunity to reflect on how we may live up to his principles, seek to establish a more just and peaceful society, and be the change makers of tomorrow in addition to honoring his words. I appreciate each and every one of you coming to this event. And I hope the talks that took place has enlightened and inspired you. Let's continue Mahatma Gandhi's legacy as we travel together down this intellectual journey. Hope you enjoy the video, thank you for visiting Kiddo Vision, please like and subscribe to the channel.